<laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. And I mean, I understand perfectly because at some point there's only so many hours, especially now that uh, you, you you don't have as many hours in your day as you used to. And yeah. you've been traveling around and you've been uh, at university in multiple places, etc. So uh, obviously practicing for other events means practicing less for the ones you care about. So uh, how is it? Uh, how, how have you felt the switch to a more adult life, if we can call it that? I wouldn't say I, I have uh, exactly switched to an adult life yet. Because um, I'm still very childish and I'm still, uh, like, I don't have a job yet. I'm still studying. Uh, so I don't think much has changed since my high school high school years. Like the only difference is that uh, now I do something uh, like I study things that I'm more interested in uh, than back then. Uh, and there were there were some periods of time where I had to uh, focus all my attention on ac academics, uh, but then. Uh, this year was a bit of a, a year off because I um, I had um, I got my bachelor degree uh, last year and I failed to thank you uh, I failed to uh, be accepted into the masters I wanted to do so I figured in the meantime I would uh, take some courses abroad uh, and yeah do a bit of traveling and cubing so i've had a, uh, like lately i've had probably more time for cubing to dedicate to cubing than uh basically ever since the start of high school what do you major by the way in your line of what do you like um, learning? I major in translation, um, oh. and the masters I, I want to do is um, to become a conference interpreter. Oh, nice. Which languages? Um, so, French, English, and Chinese. Wow. And I'm also self-teaching um, Spanish and Italian. Uh, so I'm hoping to be able to use those languages also in the future. Wow. What a broad uh, <laughs> knowledge you need to have. Is it Mandarin, Chinese? Uh, yes. Impressive. I mean, it's, it, feels, uh, it feels broad on paper, but it's not, it's not like I can speak those languages uh, perfectly for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning. Do you use the methods you learned for cubing in, in your studies? I mean, the same dedication, you know, practice, or did you find any parallel lines? Um, not really. Um, I guess Just curious, you know. <laughs> I guess it's 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 very different because uh, cubing is uh, very much something I do for fun. Uh, so I'm not necessarily in the same headspace when uh, I'm studying. But I guess um, there could be some similarities in the way I drill algs and like uh, and like a foreign language. Uh, vocabulary lists uh, in like uh, the way I have to do it consistently every day. Uh, that would be maybe one of the similarities yeah. uh, I, I would bring up. Which is easier, ZBLL or uh, <laughs> like ideograms? Uh, definitely ZBLL because there's a set number of them. <laughs> so when you're there, when you're done learning them, you're done learning them. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, 
you know, what's next in, in your pile of things that you want to learn to improve? Is it just, you know, let's hope that it gradually and organically improves? Or, uh, you know, do you have some things that you feel you haven't completed yet in terms of the way you approach the cube, the way you approach uh, first two layers, etc.? Or how, how is it? I've actually been thinking a lot um, about what's next uh, ever since I finished uh, CBLs. And I think I very much have to focus on other aspects of the solve. Um, one of them is trying to um, make my uh, full step, like basic or PL. Um, uh, last years as uh, like as smooth and seamless as possible. So uh, that implies that I have I have to be able to execute the outs uh, very fast and also to reduce the time uh, like the transition times, uh, which means that uh, I'm starting to learn uh, some last layer patterns to allow me to deduct. Uh, what PLs I'll have yeah. uh, after the R. Uh, and then I'm also working on uh, inspection a lot because that, I think that's probably the greatest area of improvement for um, many, many people. And that's uh, also very likely the reason why people like Nihon or uh, Timon are so dominant. Yeah. On this regard, I have one last slide for you, which is this one, because, oh, wow. you know, <laughs> that's not bad. And actually, if you look, I don't have it here, but if you look <laughs> at just OH, it's even crazier. So the amount of X crosses that you get on OH uh, is, is really good. And I mean, you're getting one and a half times more X crosses or X X crosses than everyone else. So... Eh, Pretty good. Let's put it like yeah. this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, can, I mean, you can improve even more in your inspection, but it's clearly something yeah. where you're you're probably yeah. doing things right already. And I mean, it contributes yeah. to your extremely low move count overall. I think. Yeah. But I still have a lot of work to do to be on the same level as I work less people like Yehan or Tina. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have a target to aim to. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you might not want to have the efficiency of Roy Young. So, uh... um, yeah. uh, but the thing with Ray Kong is that I'll never be able to match his sheer turning speed. So I have to find other ways to compensate. Or the move counts, or X crosses, or X X crosses, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Bas, you had anything more? I think that's more or less. Yeah. So I had just one question, which was that I noticed. I don't have a chart. I didn't have the time to put it, <laughs> but I noticed that you tend to favor. Um, so you clearly color neutral. Yeah. But when it comes to OH, so we have this semi-color neutral, semi-dual concept, which is when you do more than 60% of your solves on yellow or white. So for example, uh, so Felix and Max are clearly color neutral. Timon is semi-dual yeah. in the sense that, you know, see, more than 60%, two thirds of his, uh, his solves are, uh, are color neutral. For yeah, you, it's on, on two hands, it's red, white, and yellow, for some reason, red. <laughs> and you do as many. <laughs> you like it. Right. OK, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to understand. But then for OH, it's actually tend to ver revert to white and yellow more than for all the others. So you do more than 50% of your solves on, uh, on white and yellow. Yeah. So uh, do you think that there's something about the way you, you explore, you uh, um, inspect? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh... I uh, I may want to add uh, some uh, caveat to that because I don't think you have as many reconstructions uh, from me on the website as uh, other people who have 
quoi faster than me. So there may be some like sample, some sort of sample sampling bias. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa and more will be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh like what the explanation would be if you find maybe like, I put, like, yeah yeah maybe mm -hmm. i put more pressure on myself for oh so i tend to veer on uh the side of what i'm uh like initially more comfortable with because i wasn't i didn't start calling neutral i switched when i was averaging about 20 seconds mm -hmm. and it took me like a year or two to be completely comfortable with it i think i'm I very much consider myself curly neutral uh, now, like nowadays. Uh, but in high pressure situation, there might still be a bias uh, for me to do white yellow. And I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because uh, I've talked to Timon uh, about this and he he has a very strong opinion on white yellow, and he thinks that a uh, dual color neutral neutrality is actually in a way better than full color neutrality because um, you get to spend more time actually planning rather than uh, like choosing which side you're going to start on. Yeah, Felix yeah, so it's a that. controversial issue. Um, yeah. I, uh, so the data I have actually shows that it's better to be dual than full. But at the same mm, time, there's extremely fast people who are full color neutral. So it's like, yeah. you know, Felix, Felix and Max are two really good examples of, you know, that's, it's not like you shouldn't. Yeah, and just, Felix said in yeah. that podcast, average, if you remember, Bess, that the, what was it, in Worlds, where everyone had like mediocres, uh, scrambles or really bad scramble. He said that. Oh yeah, words finals. Yeah, and he said like this. This was the exact reason where dual color neutral or color neutral really shine, and you saw the podium. I mean, those yeah, were... even like white only, which yeah. is what uh, Phil and Sebastian mostly mostly do. Yeah. So that in these cases, I think that even in our competition, it was something like okay, like there were too many options. And I think Matty said like, this is something that if you are solving only white, you can easily get a four. But if you're calling neutral, you spend too much time on thinking which block or how do you use it? Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. find yourself all overwhelmed with options sometimes? Or in this case, you also switch to, you know, white or yellow? <laughs> Um, I don't think I'm at a point where I can, uh, like completely switch my mindset from colonial to just looking at white yellow. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely, there are definitely moments in which I struggle with like the, uh, indecisiveness, uh, of choosing a color to start. Like, um... The most recent example of that was actually three by three finals uh, at the comp I was yesterday. There's one solve where I, uh, at 12 seconds of inspection, I still haven't uh, decided which cross I would solve oh, on. Wow. So I didn't have my cross planned. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. I, I ended up like randomly picking yellow because uh, I don't know, maybe there was like one or two uh, edges on the top layer. So I just picked what stood up the most. And then and then I got uh, like my F2 was uh, pretty easy to look ahead in. And I didn't have much trouble transitioning into the first and second pair. Uh, but yeah, it definitely slowed me down a bit. I think I got a 7.1 on this solve, which is a little slower than what I average. But yeah, it, all of that to say that it does happen still. And it's an issue that I'll definitely have to work out a solution for. Do you work with time inspection? Like you said, you wanted to work on inspection, but do you actually practice with, like in your sessions with time inspection? Um, I uh, right now I do all of my session with 
uh, time the inspection. Oh. And I've been doing that since I think 2021, probably. But there's also times where I just sit down and uh, try to plan as far as possible with just unlimited inspection. And those are not necessarily timed solves. It's just something I do, uh, like uh, additionally to practice sessions to try to um, improve on aspects of myself. How far can you see? How yeah, yeah, you see great minds, huh? <laughs> uh, I think I can find cross plus two in about 50% of scrambles. Uh, but that's, uh, it really depends on the circumstances. Uh, and yeah. Cross plus two planning is definitely on my radar uh, for improvements. And when you, so do you find yourself switching? Uh, I don't remember if you was discussing with Tuan or with whom. Uh, the question of X cross or cross plus one. And it's, mm. you know, do you make the effort of trying to fit it there or, you know, just don't worry too much about it. It's actually more interesting to plan further ahead without trying to, to get the X cross, what do you think? Um, it's actually also something I'm, I'm working on because a lot of the X crosses I used to do were not that efficient and made look ahead much harder. So I tend to favor cross plus two planning rather than efficient X crosses, I guess. I know it's something you have discussed in the past with Kimon. Yeah. and with Philly uh, and with Patrick and with like everyone's yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah. it's amazing like do you prefer like if you see an amazing x would really you still want to like treat it as the first pair you know like just for the sake of like you can solve it as a cross plus one or you can solve it as an x cross and I heard like People saying, no, insert it as a pair because it will flow better into the second pair. You could like look ahead once you insert it. And I'm asking mm -hmm. it before because, you know, when you're solving OH, it's obviously a thing because look ahead, it's is much more a thing there because of the relatively lower, you know, TPS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tend to uh, not uh, bother as much uh, with second pair planning uh, at OH because I know my cross uh, execution will be slow anyway, so I'll have time to just uh, like scan the pieces that are available and transition like relatively smoothly into the rest of the soul. Uh, but I think regarding your question about X crosses, I think it very much uh, depends on uh like whether or not you can uh, anticipate the second pair uh in in inspection rather than uh during the cell like uh i think if uh both your cross plus one and x cross solutions uh don't allow you to plan the second pair in inspection uh, I think it's better to uh, like opt for the lower move count uh, solution anyway. But then, like the further you plan, uh, the better, I guess. No, I don't know. That's not a very definitive answer. <laughs> I know. I guess it changes from solve or to scramble to scramble. Yeah. yeah. One thing that I wanted to ask is, um, so we've seen that there's a lot of elements, sorry, it's, it's getting late, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of elements that very, very special to every solver. How much do you get to learn new things from watching 
you know, the other fast ones, because you're, you've been talking about those guys who are so fast. And you're one of those guys who are so fast. So, uh, uh, you know, among your peers, how much do you get to learn new things and see stuff and say, holy, wow, um, <laughs> does it still happen? Or does it, you know, it's part of their flavor and Timon will do his things mm. and Max will do his things and you do your things. Um, I guess since I've maybe put a lot, uh, like a bit more effort into making myself more efficient, maybe I don't have as much to learn from uh, other people, other people's selves, especially people who are in my speed range, like low six. Uh, but I definitely think uh, I still have a lot to learn, uh, especially, like I said, regarding inspection. And um, yeah, whenever there's, uh, whenever people achieve uh, fast times like national records or world records, I always look at the reconstruction, see what I would have done and maybe compared to what the solver did. Uh, so that's, always very informative. And I think my main area of improvements, like I said, are inspection and like uh, standard CFOP last layers, like learning to recognize patterns and be able to anticipate what case I will have to make everything smooth. Yeah. That's question for me because it's getting late obviously for all of us at least finally someone in the same uh, time zone as us uh, <laughs> um, I remember asking Daniel Karnock about well he main squan and his most of his finger tricks I saw like Eidos and you know were affected by squan mm. do you find yourself <clears throat> using finger tricks that you will mostly use on OH do you see yourself using on 3v3? Like, for example, yeah, I mentioned ADOS, like the flick with the index. Yeah. I've seen with Felix even using his uh, pinky finger in one of his OLLs on cube skills, if you mm -hmm. saw that. Do you find yourself like using the OH counterpart, like not for the entire ALG, but you know, but like a finger trick? Um, yeah, I guess sometimes. Uh, I don't do many ADOS one handed, but. Uh, I find myself using them a lot for AUFs, uh, mm. and that includes uh, for two-handed solving as well. Um, and also, yeah, one thing that OH helped me a lot with is being very, very comfortable with uh, regroup less F prime moves. Like I can do yeah. like many, many, many stages in a row without ever slowing down. And it's something that uh, helps with some out, like, for example. Even the J perm, you know, um, you have that. F. This OL, which. Yeah. This OL goes R prime, U prime, double sledge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there are also variants in which that's quite useful. And I think, uh, yeah, I think OH definitely helped with that because, uh, because. With OH, uh, you need to be uh, maybe a little more forceful since you're only using one hand. And yeah, that, that uh, does help when you, you switch to two-handed solving. It's easier to like... Two-handed is easy mode, right? Mode, right? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, two-handed two is basically easy mode for three Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier to do like the lefty counterparts of the F12? Mm, you mean since. Like I'm sexy move on the left with LU, you know? Mm, I don't think there's uh, that much of a link between uh, OH solving and left handed free buffer. Oh, wow. uh, because. In OH, essentially, all you do is RU moves with rotations. Mm. And it's not something you necessarily want to do uh, two-handed. So I've, 
I think it was around 2020, I worked a lot on using my left hand more because I had a very strong right hand bias and OH may have played a role in this. And also something interesting interesting I found is that right, right-handed OH solvers are often mo- more comfortable with L moves than left-handed uh, OH solvers. Yeah, true. It's more how the brain perceives it. Yeah. Bass? Fantastic. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really great. Thank you a lot. Thank you for inviting yeah. me. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And uh, again, you're a real inspiration. Thank you. Uh, I always find you ask the best questions, uh, like the most interesting questions, which is why I was really looking oh. forward to this occasion. Oh, thank you. And yeah, I really appreciate your work once again. Thank you very much. Uh, so really yeah, it's it's an honor. Oh, thank Medio you. Plus also, Bass and Stewie, I have to say, Bass contribu- contributed a lot, and Stewie is working night and day to deliver to the community all of the reconstruction. So yeah. really have to give the credit where it's due. But thank you. Really appreciate it. Great. Okay. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> and, you know, see you around. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. See you. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye.